Hi everyone, Marquise here. Um, very, very thankful to be able to worship with you and set our eyes together on Jesus and think about, you know, the day that he ascended uh, to heaven. Um, and so our, our worship time today is going to be focused on that, you know, thinking about the Lord, uh, his majesty, and the fact that he reigns. Um, so why don't we open in a word of prayer and then we'll, we'll just worship together. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We remind ourselves today that you are King, that you are Lord of all, and we're so thankful that you are seated on the throne at the right hand of the Father. And we're so thankful because we know that you intercede for us and that you left the earth as a servant and returned to your royal throne as King of Kings and Lord of all. And so today we honor you we honor you and your lordship, and we just devote ourselves all more today uh, in light of what you've done for us and who you are in our lives. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Oh, 
I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, oh. thankful for the story that we have with you. We're thankful that we get to praise you, that we get to honor you, that we get to come before you in this time of worship and give you all that we have, all that we are, all that you've made us to be. We surrender this to you, Lord, in worship. We surrender you. We surrender this to you in adoration. Lord. We surrender this to you in complete glory because you're the one who's worthy of it all. You're the one who's worthy of all of our praise and all of our honor. So we pray that the rest of this service would just do well to seek your praise and your glory. We honor you, God, and we bless you. And we ask that you would just continue to do a great work in our lives. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus that has all power to heal, all power to save, and all power to restore. It is in that name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I will praise him, he is 
exalted forever exalted and I will praise his name he is the Lord forever his truth shall reign heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name Exalted forever, exalted on high. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for a gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After all this, he was taken up before their eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. Then suddenly, two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This is this same Jesus who had been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Hechos capítulo 1 versículo 1 al 11 Estimado Teófilo, en mi primer libro me referí a todos los que Jesús comenzó a hacer y enseñar hasta el día en que fue llevado al cielo, luego de darles instrucciones por medio del Espíritu Santo a los apóstoles que había escogido. Después de padecer la muerte, se le presentó dándoles muchas pruebas convincientes de que estaba vivo. Durante 40 días se le apareció y les habló acerca del reino de Dios. Una vez, mientras comía con ellos, les ordenó, No se alejan de Jerusalén, sino esperen la promesa del Padre, de la cual les he hablado. Juan bautizó con agua, pero dentro de pocos días ustedes serán bautizados con el Espíritu Santo. Entonces los que estaban reunidos con él le preguntaron, Señor, ¿es ahora cuando vas a restablecer el reino a, Jer a Israel? No, no les toca a ustedes conocer ni hora ni el momento determinados por la autoridad misma del Padre, les contestó Jesús. Pero cuando venga el Espíritu Santo sobre ustedes, recibirán poder y serán mis testigos tanto en Jerusalén como en toda Judea y Samaria y hasta los confines de la tierra. Habiendo dicho esto, mientras ellos lo miraban, fue llevado a las alturas hasta que una nube lo ocultó de su vista. Ellos se quedaron mirando fijamente al cielo mientras él se alejaba. De repente, se les acercaron dos hombres vestidos en blanco y les dijeron, Galileos, ¿qué hacen aquí mirando al cielo? El mismo Jesús que ha sido llevado de entre ustedes al cielo vendrá otra vez de la misma manera que lo han visto irse. Amén. I've never done it this way before. That's a kind of the seven famous last words of the church. We've never done it this way before. Well, um, <clears throat> my practice has always been in churches I've served to celebrate the Ascension on Sunday. But technically, the Ascension is 40 days after Easter, 
And so it always falls on a Thursday. So today is Ascension Thursday. So we're going to look at the Ascension and particularly high mountain experiences. How has God blessed people on the mountaintops? What has Jesus done uh, in his ministry on mountains? And what are mountaintop experiences that you have had? Luke 24 tells us that uh, Jesus was in the vicinity of Bethany with the disciples. He went up on the mountain, which would be the Mount of Olives, and ascended into heaven. And we read in Acts uh, 11, or Acts 1 11, that two angels saw the disciples standing there, staring up in the sky, and they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So today, we're going to look at the ascension and think about that. And on Sunday, I'd like us to look at some scriptures and think about Christ's return. What does that mean? The angel said, in the same way, he will come back to you as you have seen him go into heaven. So that's for Sunday. So come back Sunday, 1045. We'll look at the second advent. And today, we're thinking about mountaintop experiences. Mountains are mentioned between 500 and 570 times in the Bible. God reveals himself on mountaintops. In the Old and New Testament, we see it time and again. On Mount Ararat, God revealed a new covenant with creation and provided a rainbow as a reminder that he would not destroy the earth by flood again. On Mount Moriah, God revealed his grace by providing a ram in the thicket to spare Isaac when Abraham took his son up to the mountaintop to offer a sacrifice. Later we see Mount Moriah is where the temple in Jerusalem is built. And to this day, it's a holy mountain, a holy spot to Jews and Christians alike. On Mount Sinai, God revealed his holiness and Moses received the law. On Mount Nebo, God revealed his plan to return his people to the promised land. <clears throat> and Moses looked across through the valley, across the Jordan River, and saw that God was keeping his promise and returning Israel to the promised land. On Mount Carmel, there was a great battle, a great struggle between the <clears throat> priests of Baal and Elijah. And Elijah made them a bet. He said, well, let's see whose God is really God, whose God is real, whose God is powerful. And so he said, well, let's each build an altar, cover it with wood, offer sacrifice, and we'll let God come down and consume the sacrifice. Well, the prophets of Baal tried all kinds of things. They wept, they cried, they cut their flesh, nothing happened. So Elijah said, okay, let's check with my God the one true God. He said, oh, by the way, pour some water on my sacrifice. Dig a trench, fill it up with water, make a moat around the, the altar. He stood back and said, Lord, consume your sacrifice. And God sent a fire from heaven that lapped up the sacrifice and the water and a great miracle was, was presented, showing God's power. On Mount of Transfiguration, God revealed his glorified self to Peter, James, and John. And Jesus told him about his coming ascension. He didn't call it that, but that he would be leaving soon. And they didn't understand what he meant. On a Galilean mountainside, God revealed a glimpse of life in the kingdom of God, with what we call the Sermon on the Mount. On the Mount of Temptation, God revealed his victory over Satan when Satan tempted him three times, three different ways that, that are recorded in scripture. I'm sure he tempted him more than just three times. And each time Jesus responded with scripture. He quoted God's word. He resisted the devil and Satan lost the battle. On the Mount of Olives, where we come to the beginning of our story of the Ascension, God revealed his plan for Jerusalem and the end of the age. How has God revealed himself to you? In mountaintop experiences or in simple quiet blessings? 
these last couple of months certainly don't feel like mountaintops, but interesting things are happening. For us, Sharon Sisher has called more in the last two months than in the past 10 years, checking up, seeing how we're doing. Our daughter brought us four N95 masks so that we would be safer if we were traveling out. Instacart is finding more and more things in stock on Monday. Uh, and on Monday, uh, we went for our first drive since March and stopped for two curbside pickups. One of which sure made our cat happy because we were out of cat food. So we have little blessings, not exactly mountaintop experiences, but we've also been blessed uh, by serving churches in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, and now in Lynn. We have three above average children, six wonderful, talented grandchildren. Sharon and I have both fought cancer and won. But the greatest of all mountaintop experiences is when we met Jesus, and that has made all the difference. Isaiah 118 says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as crimson, they shall be like wool. Romans 6 tells us the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though all the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging we will not fear. Jesus told disciples, wait for my gift my father has promised. Wait here in Jerusalem. So on Mount Zion, in an upper room, in the upper city of Jerusalem, the church was born on the day of Pentecost, which we will celebrate in 10 days. So our mountaintops may be small, like a chance to go for a drive after being shut in our house for two months. Or they may be great, like being delivered from illness, cancer, poverty, finding the right job and the right calling. So let's think about the mountaintop experiences we've had as we move forward in, in our reducing our, our restrictions uh, for the COVID time. Let's not do anything foolish. We won't be opening the church for services in the building for a few more weeks still. We're gonna continue with uh, Zoom and Facebook and YouTube, but we're beginning to move back to normal. This could indeed be a mountaintop experience when our lives are changed through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these few examples of the many instances where God has revealed himself on the mountaintop. And yes, it feels like we're in the valley right now, but we're coming out. Every state is relaxing restrictions to some degree. Help us to remain wise and safe as we move back into society. And help us, Lord, to recognize that through it all, you are with us. And the greatest mountaintop experience of all is getting to know Jesus Christ as a personal friend, as a Lord, as a savior from sin. Be with us all, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As Laura plays on her flute, I invite you to look at the images, many of them, the Mount of Olives, but other mountains, other places where God has ministered and blessed in the Holy Land. Read the scriptures as they come up on the screen. And if you have not, had that kind of mountaintop experience where Jesus became real to you, where you recognize that your sins were forgiven. Then this is an opportunity to think, to pray, to invite Jesus into your life, into your heart. Thank you.